Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. The central bank just bailed out the banks again. Here's how. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, we know that Venezuela, they've been having a lot of problems. We know the United States has been placing a lot of sanctions on Venezuela to force them into regime change. That's basically it. They want the oil. They want to place the dollar on their natural resources. And this has been the push ever since. And since then, Venezuela has been struggling. People have been struggling there. And this is what happens when sanctions are placed on these countries. It's actually the people that pay and the people that suffer. Well, this past weekend, Venezuela failed to make a $237 million in bond coupon payment. They're blaming technical glitches and all different types of problems. But as soon as this weekend, they might default because they have to pay something like $842 million principal plus interest, which is coming due. And we can see right now this is going to be pretty darn tough for them to do if they missed the last one. Now we'll have to wait and see what happens, but they could end up defaulting. We see out in the United Kingdom, well, it seems that retail sales, they are not doing well whatsoever. UK retail sales, they are falling at the fastest pace since the depth of the recession in 2009. And there's already worries about the housing market. We can see that the retail employment, that is also plunged. And the situation there is not improving. It's actually getting worse. And all of a sudden, September had this incredible surge in sales. And then everything just completely plummeted out of nowhere. And it went from a 42 positive in September all the way down to a 36 negative in October. And we can see right now that this is a huge problem. Now, they're blaming this on inflation. Inflation is rising. We also know that many individuals, they are losing their jobs or they can't find jobs. And what we're seeing is the same theme in every single country. As more and more people lose their jobs, can't find the high paying jobs, as housing continually moves up, inflation starts to hit, it becomes a huge problem for the everyday person. And we're starting to see this and it's starting to snowball. But don't worry, what they always do is they come up with new programs to suck more people in, in, in borrowing money because as they know, people don't have money saved. So what they like to do is they like you to take out student loans. They like you to take out auto loans. They like to, you to take out mortgages. They like you to take out uh, more credit cards, anything where you can spend where it's not your own funds because they understand that people today because they're losing their jobs or they have a part-time job they don't have that same full-time job they don't have the funds saved so they want you to borrow the money to spend the money and that is becoming even more difficult because people are maxed out or they just say i can't make these payments anymore now, we understand that the United States has been re bringing in refugees. They've been allowing illegals to come over the border. And there was many different agendas associated with this. And having more people in the country actually boosts GDP. It allows the banks to loan more money. It helped Obamacare and helped a lot of different things. And now what they're trying to do is they're trying to help the auto industry. So. They started a new program. This is subprime auto loan program designed specifically for refugees and illegals. So those newly arrived refugees and illegals that come into this country, guess what? You know, they have trouble finding jobs. They can't get cars. So what they'll do, and again, they have no credit history whatsoever. They'll allow these individuals coming into the country to get a car with absolutely no money whatsoever. Now, remember, they have no credit history. They have nothing, but they'll be able to take out a loan. And this is what the central banks like to do. They like to continually push debt out. That is their product. Now we talk about housing. We talk about the office buildings. We talk about commercial real estate. And we talked about San Francisco where all of a sudden sales have started to plummet in the residential area. And we're seeing something very interesting in the office sector. Now, New office towers, they are sprouting, sprouting up like mushrooms all over the place in San Francisco. The biggest tech companies, they're expanding their office footprint and they're continually building. Now, 
something strange is happening because companies overall are not adding to employment in San Francisco and office using employment, a metric prepared by Civilis Studley based on its analysis of Bureau of Labor Statistics data, utilizing employment categories for financial information and professional business services has turned negative this year. So they built all these buildings. They have a huge amount of office space. And of course, when you look out your window and you see the cranes and you see all the office buildings going up, you're saying, wow, everyone's expanding. But the problem is they're not filling the office space with employees. And this is puzzling once again. Now, do does the central banks, does the banking community with these corporations have some type of deal where keep the building going, make it look good? And we know that they don't have jobs for people. Actually, a lot of these companies have been laying off people. And something very interesting is that growth has peaked in 2015. And right now, the employment in these companies is declining at this point. And we know in retail and many other corporations, they've been laying off people, buying back their stocks. So this is quite puzzling what is happening out in San Francisco. We know that pending home sales right now in September, they have plunged to their lowest since January of 2015. They dropped by 5.4% right now. And this is three consecutive months in a row. We know that new home sales, they have plummeted. And this housing recovery is going absolutely nowhere. Now, the South only saw a modest decline, suggesting that this had nothing to do with the hurricanes whatsoever. What it had to do with, because as we know, we went through the whole entire summer where existing new home, pending home sales, they were all down. And if you look at the housing market, like new home sales, and you look at it throughout time, there's a range where housing is supposed to be in the historical range for housing. And it's anywhere from 0.3% all the way up to 0.5%. Well, we're at 0.25% right now. We're not even close because during 2008, we dropped all the way down to 0.1%. We've been pushed back up to 2.35%. And we're not in the historical range where housing is normalized. And remember, just to get it to this point, we're at 0% interest rates. We're having investment companies, hedge funds, purchase houses, do not sell them. Banks, they're not foreclosing on houses. They're letting people stay there. The Fed has bought up all this toxic real estate. Foreign buyers are coming in. A lot of wealthy individuals are paying cash. And all of this brought us to 2.5%. There's a problem, I mean 0.25%. There's a problem here because strip all that away, bring interest rates to 6 or 5 or 7%, this would be a disaster. So you can tell right now, this is not a housing recovery. And when you look at the rental market, there's a new survey conducted by apartmentlist.com. They're saying that one in five American renters missed a payment in the past three months. So they estimating about 3.7 million American renters have experienced an eviction. So what we see here right now is that the economy is deteriorating very, very quickly. We're not seeing real improvements, but they're trying to convince us that we are seeing improvements. Now, they're putting out the idea that the third quarter GDP is going to be around 3%. They didn't include the hurricane data in this we also see retail inventories they tumble by one percent month a month in september this is the biggest drop since august of 2009 and once again gdp it's all manipulated they continually manipulate revise add in subtract just to get that number up actually it's as meaningless as the unemployment numbers we also see that the eu just did the bank's a massive favor. They kind of bailed them out once again. Now, the ECB announced that it would cut the rate of QE in half to 30 billion euros from January 2018 until the end of September 2018, adding this would extend beyond, if necessary, until inflation path has substantially adjusted. 
and ECB will reinvest the principal payments from maturing securities purchased. Now, the European Union executive arm, the European Commission, made a lot of executives very, very happy by abandoning its multi-year pledge to break up the too big to fail banks. Now, despite that these banks are a huge risk, that there's huge problems in Deutsche Bank, BNP, Parabas, ING, Santander, the rest, they're not going to break up the big banks. They're going to let them stay as they are because as they know, if they start doing this, if they touch anything, the whole thing falls apart. And of course, they don't want to break up the big banks because it's much easier for them to manage these big banks and have everyone sucked into these big banks than having many, many multiple small banks. This is why they consolidated into these gigantic big banks because they can do so many different things and this is why they don't want to break it up. So what we're seeing right now is that the central bank system once again kind of bailed out the banks and they're just not touching them. Now, what we're seeing right now from all the data that we just went over from housing to UK retail sales, through everything that we've been looking at, we can see that the economy is continually breaking down. It is not improving, and we're not going to see any type of an improvement. Retail sales this holiday season, it is going to be a complete and utter disaster. Online, offline, makes no difference because throughout this year, they've been laying off many, many people in the retail sector. Corporations have been laying off people. It's been very quiet of how many they actually laid off because remember the the department that reports all this in the government that was wiped out they're saying because of budget cuts and we know that the bls they don't count anything like this their data is all manipulated so we look at all different types of data to see what's really going on we look at what's happening in the corporate market and we can see that revenue sales they're all dropping corporate tax receipts dropping. And this is how we know that things aren't going as well as they've been telling us. It's almost like those individuals that looked into the subprime securities and said, well, wait a minute. I know the world is telling us and everyone agrees and all the big banks agree and the government agrees that these are rated AAA and they're perfect. But what we're seeing is that these financial instruments, they're garbage. Now, again, they were laughed at, these individuals that said this. We're looking at the same thing. We're looking at all the different data and we're saying something doesn't make sense. Actually, when we started talking about retail and housing and how things are going to start to slide to the downside because of people losing their jobs, because this is an illusion, because they keep manipulating the numbers, we've been right on track. Now, this is a slow process because it takes a very long time to build this up because they need to convince everyone over time that the economy is getting better. They have to pump up certain bubbles, which they have done. They kept the market up, but everything else. And again, they can't control people's spending. This is why they have to issue loans. This is why they want you to take a loan out for the car. Remember, they also have to do this because the value of the dollars decreased so much. You need so many more dollars to purchase any type of item. You need to take out a loan to go to college. You need to take a loan out to purchase a house. You have to take a loan out, which is a credit card, to purchase something in retail because people just don't have the funds today. And when we see all this, we can see how far we've come and how far the economy has deteriorated and it's going to continually deteriorate. It's not going to get any better because we're going to see a lot more layoffs. We're going to see a lot more things happen as we hit 2018 because after this holiday season, it's going to accelerate like you cannot believe. I mean, think about 2016 going into 2017 when we started to talk about the retail market and we said, yeah, when we hit 2017, there's going to be a lot of stores closing. Nobody thought it was going to be in the thousands, yeah, maybe a thousand stores, maybe 800 stores, but this is in the multiple of thousands. As we approach 2018, we're going to see this skyrocket because the economy is breaking down. And once it starts to break down, it just accelerates as time goes on. So you need to be ready and prepared because it's just going to get a lot worse as we move forward.